Think about more Quran than you ever have. You're going to memorize Quran this year in Ramadan. You're going to, you're going to, you know, love reciting it, love listening to it, love talking about it, love listening to its explanation. This is what you're going to do. This is going to be your month of Quran. That's what Allah wants first. Then He says, "Faman shahida min kum shahr falyasum." Then whoever gets to witness that month, then they should fast. Then he should fast. Yet Allah says the most basic thing: the month of Ramadan is the one in which Quran was sent down as guidance for humanity. Why are we being told something so basic? Because in this month, it's like you start all over again. Like you don't even know this Quran. You recite it like you've never recited it before. You reflect on it like you've never reflected on it before. You memorize it like you've never, never memorized it before. You cry over it like you've never cried over it before. It is a refresher. It's not just another Ramadan. It's a new life for you. Where does taqwa live? Where does the Quran live? Where does the Quran live, guys? In the heart. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ There's a clear ayat that live in the chests of people that have been given knowledge. You want this heart, not only to have taqwa and fight your body, but to fight your body, your heart has to be strong. To be strong, your heart has to be fed. What does it have to be fed? The Quran. You're, you're starving your body and you're feeding your heart. That's what you're doing in Ramadan. So he says, whoever, whoever witnesses this month, then, the, then your throat loses, your stomach loses, your temptations lose, and your heart wins 30 days in a row. When you do any exercise 30 days in a row, then you know what? You can turn it into a lifelong habit. There are psychology studies on this stuff. You can make lifelong habits if you can commit to them for how long? 30 days in a row. Allah gave us this training so we can develop taqwa. Allah made Ramadan tougher because He wants your life to be what? Easier. Learn taqwa here so you can save yourself for 11 months. It'll be better for you. Because when you save yourself from haram, when you save yourself from sin, when you save yourself from forgetting Allah, then your life becomes easier. Allah opens more doors of risk. Allah makes your health better. Allah makes your family better. Allah makes your relationships with your kids better. He even makes your wife nicer. I know, it's possible. The first thing Allah wants you to think about when you think of Ramadan is not pakore, it's not samosa, it's not the ketchup, it's not the fries, it's not the sleeping during the taraweeh. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you're the only guy standing up. Everybody else is in ruku, you're like... <laughs> then there are people who do extra long sajda, not because they're in khushur. Because they're like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you think about when you think about Ramadan. Quran is telling you when you think about Ramadan, you will have to think about what first and foremost? The fact that the Quran, the greatest gift of Allah, the fulfillment of the dua of Ibrahim السلام, was given to you in this month. Only when you do training, then you're gonna ask to be do to do even more. Yes? But when you finish this training, Allah will ask you for more or for less? He's gonna ask you for less. Does it ever happen to you that you eat after Ramadan and still feel kind of guilty? Yeah? That's pretty good training. Now you're even thinking about the halal. And if you're even so cautious about the halal, then you must be super cautious about the what? That's the training of Ramadan. That's not, not, actually no, that's not the training of Ramadan. That's the training of fasting. Ramadan has its own purpose. Fasting has its own purpose. This is the purpose of fasting. If you find yourself losing control, if you find yourself really tempted, if you find yourself going towards haram very easily, one of the easiest things you can do is consciously fast. Consciously, not subconsciously. Some people fast and say, well, might as well lose weight at the same time. No, no, no. If you consciously fast, it will actually develop taqwa. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. بِمَا قَدَّمَ What did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. 
Or, I, you know, right, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا They're going to be standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat, staring right at you. That's what it's going to be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, you'll be looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, Mali هَذَا kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرَ What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed. This was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams. I want to memorize the Qur'an. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you wanted to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ insan. No, no. Yes, on that day, the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being's blind now. Rather, the case is that the human being, عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self, بَصِيرًا Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you, and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves, about ourselves, and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job, you got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us. He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, 
If we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In You turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves. And they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only gonna get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You want to live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have, in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further.